GGTS is a uh, synthetic environment generator, so it's used for training, R&D, testing, test and evaluation. They use it to create the environment uh, for their virtual sims to interoperate. Next generation threat system provides all the threats uh, in the simulated environment, whether it's air, surface, ground. It has the same reactions, uh, parameters, uh, that you would see in the real world. It kind of goes back to the old, the old saying, you know, train like you fight, fight like you train. So make sure that you're doing, you're practicing what you would eventually be employing to in whatever situation in the future. So it's, it's just threat familiarity so that if it does come up in real life, you know exactly, or you have a good understanding of what the enemy is going to do and their capabilities to do, you know, those things. But this is the first time that we're really going in and replicating the world in three dimensions and using physical models. That's extremely important once we you know, gravitated towards these higher end threats and then also bringing systems online like the Growler that we need to be able to assess how the system's working and how we're looking at the threats through our sensors. It's a pretty uh, broad CGF system that uh, can simulate uh, shipborne radars, airborne radars, ground base, comm, so it's, it's been very versatile for us and, uh, and, and has the uh, growth potential for uh, cover future growth. A lot of things you can't train in the aircraft short of war. Uh, an NGTS system or CGF system in, in general uh, provides that ability to train in a uh, fairly uh, contested area, electronically uh, saturated, if you will. So it provides us a means to train that way. The bottom line is training the fighter. If they're going to make mistakes, we want them to make them in a constructive environment. Having live and virtual and constructive gives us a way to ensure the trainers getting the training they need and making the mistakes. It is very vital. And we as NGTS um, participants have to make sure that our models are as realistic as they can be. Well, the last thing we want to do is provide negative training. We want them to see the threats the way the threats are really going to look to them when they're flying uh, the live aircraft. Oh, it just keeps getting um, better and better, really, such that uh, as we get new threat systems, new radars, and things evolve, that uh, we'll be able to do more complex simulations with uh, interacting with other platforms at the same time, and then also doing uh, maybe mission rehearsal type activities. For the brand new student sitting in the simulator, it's giving him the best idea of what he's really going up against and giving him the, the most accurate representation of the threats that he's going to be dealing with in usually fairly short order. Uh, I, I think that's one of those, those lessons that we keep learning over and over again is that the kid that's in training is going to be in combat in about four months and, and he's usually in there sooner than he thought he would be. So whatever we can give him now that's the best training as possible is, is always going to be to his benefit.